everyone, this is Aileen Miracle from Mrs. Miracle's Music Room, and today I'm going to talk to you about using Plickers and what it looks like on your phone when you use the app. I know when I first heard about Plickers, I didn't really understand it until I saw what was on my phone screen um, when I was using it with students. Now today I'm just going to show you with a few cards by myself, but it'll give you a good idea of what it will look like in a classroom full of students. Now with the um, Plickers app, you can use your iPhone or your Android. I do believe you can find it on your iPad um, as an app, but it mine always shuts down. It really doesn't work very well, so you probably want to use a phone, an iPhone or an Android to record. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my phone screen so you can see what's on the screen, what you will see, when you're using the app. All right, so now we're looking at what my phone app looks like when I open it up in the Plickers app. Um, you'll see a few classes from this year as well as the sample class that I created in my last video. And if you haven't watched that video first, I would suggest doing that. It shows you how to navigate the Plickers website from assigning numbers to students and creating questions and assigning questions and then looking at the data afterwards and all that good stuff. Um, I would watch that video first, but in that video, I created the sample class. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the sample class. And then you'll see you'll see those three test or three questions that I created in the last video, including a test question and then two questions about Ta and TT. Um, I went ahead and assigned those questions to this class so that they would show up in the app. So the test question, I'm going to go ahead and click that. The test question, I suggested creating one for every single Plickers assessment you do. Even if students have done Plickers before, it's just a good um, review of how to hold the cards. So what I say to students is, okay, everybody, I would like everybody to hold up your card so it shows A on top. And you'll see right here that A is highlighted green. So then when I go to scan, right now you're just going to see my couch, but I'll go ahead and sit here. So you can kind of understand that you know you'll see all of your students within your phone camera and then you just you know you can just kind of scan the room like this you know so you can make sure you can see all of your students and make sure this is held up okay all right so I'm gonna hold up the card that says one and right now I'm putting B on top and I've assigned Macy to be B so that's not the correct um, answer and because this is the test question you can go ahead and tell your students oh Macy you're holding up B make sure you're holding up A so then she could flip it like this and just so you can kind of see what more than you know you might have 24 students in your class what that would look like I'll just hold up two cards you can kind of see that there will be two bubbles going on at the same time So you see how there are two bubbles here. Scott um, is number four, I think. Yep. And I don't have A on top for that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it around. Oh, A and A. Oh, I might be covering up. Yeah, so you just saw that I was kind of covering up the black part of this here. If you're doing that, then the... Um, app won't register that so you have to tell students oh, make sure that your fingers aren't on there and then let's say I hold up here's number two let's say I hold up a for that and then you'll see that person's name along with the answer and it's green if it's correct and red if it's not correct which is really cool so I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to the next question so I'm gonna go okay check mark I got everyone's answer and then I'll kind of show you a summary there and then I'm gonna go back and I'll do which rhythm uh, has two sounds on one beat. And for this, there are only two questions. Now, this is something where you could have the question, you know, on a PowerPoint slide, or you could just write it up on the board. Or with this one, it's easy enough that you could just say, okay, everyone, show me A for TT and B for TA. So you would say, which rhythm has two sounds on one beat? Show me A for TT or B for TA. And then you click scan. And then I'll hold up number two here. And I'll say A, T, T, that's the correct answer. Let's say someone says B for Ta, and it'll show you that's not correct. Now, at this point, I would not tell them, you know, that they're incorrect. Unless you're using it as a formative assessment, I would wait until everybody's answered and then go ahead and tell them, um, you know, which one was correct and which one was not. 
and then let's say you got everybody so you hit the check mark and then you can go to which pattern did I clap and same idea you can hit scan get everybody's answer with this one you might want to have the musical notation projected on your smart board or just written on your whiteboard or chalkboard or whatever um, so that students know which ones they have to choose from and I would have you know the rhythms written out with notation instead of with words as it is in here. So I just wanted to give you a, a quick idea of what it looks like on the app itself. So I hope this has given you a good idea of how the Plickers app works. I know, like I said for myself, when I saw it on the screen, I was much more comfortable using it and really understood it a lot better. And it's really such a great app to get a really quick assessment with your students. And it seems like a lot of work at first, especially if you watch the first video about how to input students' names and numbers and all of that. Um, it seems like a lot of work at first. Um, if you are a related arts teacher, you teach music or PE or art or whatever, I would suggest starting with one grade level. And then once you have entered in the information for that one grade level, you could do another Plickers ass assessment rather easily. You wouldn't have to enter in all those names again. Um, I, in the past, have used, you know, the strategy of, okay, everybody close your eyes and raise your hand if you think it's choice one, raise your hand if you think it's choice two, or raise your hand if you think it's pattern three or whatever, um, which overall works pretty well, but you have some students who may not vote at all, um, and it's kind of hard to see which students have voted and which haven't unless you kind of know to look and you check mark all the students who have voted. So this is really fail proof. You know, you know exactly how every student voted. So um, I really hope that you're able to use that. Please let me know how it works for you and have a great day.